Hello and welcome to MedCast Plus. I am your host, Dr. Jack Braha. Here we feature local healthcare providers and physicians to help give us some great tips to stay healthy here in Brooklyn and beyond. Today we're taking a little bit of a turn. We have a guest who is a medical student. He's not yet really a healthcare provider. He's not a physician yet, but he is certainly a physician in training here in Brooklyn. Uh, currently, uh, our guest, Mr. Max Cohen, or as we say in the hospital, student doctor Max Cohen is here. He is a student uh, here in Brooklyn at Brookdale Hospital, and we would like to have a different type of a show today where we focus on students who might be watching today or our young ones out there who might be interested in a career in medicine, not just becoming a doctor, but a nurse or other healthcare provider. And I've had the honor of knowing Max for some time. He was one of our students in our practice at some point. And so I want to welcome Max Cohen to our show today. Welcome, Max. Thank you for Thank coming you. here. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It is a different show today. We are not going to give out much healthcare advice. We're not going to cover any uh, significant healthcare topics like prostate cancer or colon cancer. But really, we want to shed light on what it takes and what it's like to become a doctor. And I think I remember what it was like. It was 15 years ago when I, or no, it's longer now. I'm not going to say my age. Uh, but it is longer since I started medical school. And I recall being nervous, and I recall all the forms and the tests and the studies and college and how stressful it is. And for our viewers out there today, the moms and dads, sisters, brothers, and the students out there who want to know what it's like to become a physician because someone in the family is considering it, let's talk a bit about the process. Tell me, how did you even decide that you wanted to become a physician? So this is actually a pretty interesting story. I actually wanted to be a lawyer. I started out the, wanting... the, the enemy of, of doctors for many yeah. ways, right? Okay. Yeah. We don't get along all the time. I know. It's kind of ironic, actually. Ironic. You wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to be a lawyer, and in my sophomore year of high school, I was walking through the atrium in my high school, and one of the deans pulled me over and said, where are you going? You know, what are you doing? And I said, oh, you know, I don't have a class right now. So she said, well, there's a medical group. A few doctors are here speaking and you know why don't you go sit in so I said okay I mean I don't, I don't even know what persuaded me to but I went into that meeting I heard some doctors speak for the most part I don't even remember what they said but I just remembered the passion that they had the passion that they had for helping others the smile on their faces talking about what they do and that kind of spoke to me and that led me into getting a volunteer position at Mammoth Hospital that following summer and shadowing a doctor there and kind of got the, the ball rolling on things. Okay, so here you are in high school, you step into some room where a bunch of doctors fascinated you and you decide maybe this is for me. So as you moved out of high school and into college, where, where did you go to your undergraduate? So I did my undergraduate uh, education at Brooklyn College. Brooklyn born, Brooklyn yes, educated. Exactly. So in Brooklyn College, you decided I'm going to go what we call pre-med, mm -hmm. which really is no longer a major. It used to be that you would get to college and say, hi, counselor, I am pre-med, but no longer in many schools is pre-med a major per se. You have to pick a major. What, what did you focus on? Yeah, so actually, you know, a bunch of people have always just assumed that I majored either in chemistry or biology. I was on the pre-med track, but I did major in psychology. It, it was a field that really spoke to me, trying to understand the mind and how everything works and you know all the different choices and decisions that we make in life. And I felt that it would be a good, a good path to put myself on for a profession that's going to be talking to people and uh, trying to get them to make decisions for their own health and hopefully their life. Well, you know, it's an interesting point. And I think that's really important that folks and prospective students out there realize they don't always have to pick biology to go to medical school. And it's important to spend the four years in college chasing a passion while also taking your pre-medical requisite te uh, courses that prepare you for the MCAT, which is the medical admissions test. That you can, you can major in studio art like one of my partners had. You can major, I majored in economics. I found that a fascinating science, economics. And I also was able to complete my pre-medical requisites just like you did majoring in psychology. So it's important for the viewers out there to realize that you know, from the day after high school and you start college, 
you don't have to pick being a scientist from day one. You, you can major in journalism. You can major in, in English literature um, and still go to medical school. You could major in dance. So you were a psychology major, and you spent all four years at Brooklyn College? I actually graduated in three and a half years. But yes, they were all That good of a student Brooklyn. graduates in three and a half <laughs> years. OK. So at, during the three and a half years, you took your prerequisites. Uh, what was it that kept pushing you to pursue this passion, this crazy passion of spending you know, the early part of your adult life in school? What else motivated you? So there was actually a point where I was debating whether this was you know, the field that I wanted to go into. And I considered psychology as a profession. Uh, I still believe you know, it was part of the sciences, and the sciences were what intrigued me. Um, but I think ultimately, you know, what drove me down this direction was always remembering the passion that I saw in those doctors' faces and you know, in their voices, uh, the ability to help people uh, for the rest of your life. and make an impact that's not just on the person that you're treating, but their entire family. Yeah, it's, and I think it, it's that that's, true. That, that's kind of what drove me. Yeah, as, as a physician, as, as, as a doctor of medicine, you really have that ability to change someone's life. And when you realize it, or you take a step back, you realize that you're not just treating the patient, it's everyone around them. And it's more than that. If they own a business, it's their employees, right? Keeping someone healthy keeps their business intact, keeps their employees. So you're really affecting a lot of people as a, a physician. So that's what I hear from a lot of medical students is that I, I, I want to make a difference. And this was the way my calling was to make a difference. So in high school, you decided, you know, some people are told they're going to become a doctor, right? My mom apparently held me in the um, rocking chair and told me to become a plastic surgeon uh, from when I was just born. So uh, well, that, you know, that was the only time I listened to my mom, possibly, but I'm not a plastic surgeon. <laughs> Well, you know, what's funny is uh, when I was a child and I didn't, you know, I didn't want to be a doctor at that point, but from, you know, early on when I was going to see my own pediatrician, I would step into his shoes before he would enter the room, you know, while we were waiting and I'd, you know, get up and uh, look at my brother's nose and I'd say his famous phrase, uh, you know, nose please, other nose please. So you were playing doctor uh, even before you knew you'd become a doctor. Yeah. So once you make the decision, hey, I'm going to dedicate, um, in, in many cases, over 10 years of training and education to become a physician, because it's four years of college in, in, in reality, and medical school is, in general, another four years, so that's eight years. After that, there's internship, there's residency, there's fellowships. Um, in my case, I spent 14 years becoming <laughs> a physician. Um, and I just tell people I started my career for life. Yes, and, and that's exactly the point I'm getting to, is that this is not really a job. This is a lifestyle. This is a life. And for the viewers out there that are watching, when you decide, for the young ones especially, that, hey, I want to become a physician, uh, that's your life. It's not so much a job. It's a title. It's like being called Mr. or Mrs. It's doctor. It really is something serious. So in, in college now, as you get towards the end of college, you have to apply to medical school. And in general, that occurs after the third year or during um, the end of the third year or early fourth year. Um, what was that process like for you? How, how was it to start applying to medical school after taking what we call the MCAT, of course? Yeah, so, you know, that, that whole process is, well, it's a process and it can get quite frustrating at times. You know, there's always a test uh, to get to the next step of applications. You need interviews again, you need letters of recommendation and personal statements and building up your resume and making sure that you have extracurricular activities and kind of, you want to build yourself into the whole package. And so that whole time frame between filling out the application and actually getting an interview or, you know, even just submitting the application, you're wondering, you know, did I do enough? You know, can I go back in time and, and change something? Should I have done that? Uh, can I have gotten myself more involved in some research? You know, so it, it's a frustrating time, but it's also rewarding. And, and you take it day by day and you just remind yourself constantly what you're doing it for. And, uh, I, I, I recall the anxiety it. also. <laughs> yeah. No, I, it, it is an anxious period. I applied, um, I took my MCATs uh, uh, two weeks before 9-11, the tragedy um, here in New York yeah. and uh, in other parts of the country. So um, mail was somewhat delayed then. And I remember anxiously checking. Now I think things are delivered electronically probably and email. Mm -hmm. But back then we waited for this piece of paper. And the MCAT score was your ticket to ride. And when you opened up the envelope, if you had a certain score or higher, you knew you had a fighting chance. Because 
medical school applications are tough. If I was told when I was applying by a dean of admissions that if you took all the files, the thousands of applications, and threw them up in the air, and whatever landed on the desk he would accept, he said every application would be fantastic. Because everyone applying, by the time you get to this period through organic chemistry, biology, chemistry, MCATs, by the time someone survived all that, they're pretty well accomplished. Yeah. And so you mentioned some extracurricular activities. What are some suggestions you have for the viewers today if they're looking to get into the medical field, whether it's become becoming a physician or becoming a nurse, what are some of the extracurricular activities one can do to boost their application or to even get more experience? Yeah, so there, there are really, I mean, endless amounts of things that you can do. Getting involved in your local community charities is one thing to start. Uh, getting involved with uh, different organizations. Uh, for example, I spent a good deal amount of time with uh, children with special needs. Uh, getting involved as a camp counselor, but then volunteering throughout the year as well, putting together events and uh, summer tournaments to raise money and fundraisers. But then also things that we don't usually think about, like uh, directing a blood drive, which really doesn't take too much of your time. You kind of, you, you know, blood, blood centers are begging for blood constantly, and so all you really have to do is reach out to them, tell them, you know, I want to start a local blood drive in my community. And uh, those things go, go a long way. And, you know, if you, if you get to do that a few times, it shows your commitment to something and especially something that uh, can save a life. Yeah, vo volunteering is important because you'll be giving back to society, in my opinion, your whole career as a physician, okay? Your whole career as a physician, you are going to be doing something to contribute to society. It's not all about cashing a paycheck. And volunteering is important. Um, I, you know, during my high school years, I volunteered. Uh, funny, you mentioned Monmouth Medical Center in Long Branch, New Jersey, where I grew up. Um, a fabulous hospital on the shore where I volunteered a lot of time. And it was good because, number one, you got um, a free exposure, per se, a, a trial to see what it's like to work in a hospital, which is essentially um, what you will do the first many years of your career as a physician. And you got to give back a bit. And I think volunteering at a local hospital for our viewers out there in Brooklyn, we have a number of hospitals out there that if you make a phone call, they have a volunteer office at nearly every hospital out there. At our hospital, Mount Sinai Brooklyn, we have a, a volunteer program and we have many volunteers. Getting exposure while also giving back is important. It is important to give back to society. Um, it's not about take, take, take. It's about giving back. And as a physician, you learn that very, very early. Waking up in the middle of the night to run in and help somebody, leaving a wedding, leaving a dinner, leaving a date sometimes leaving your kids to go and help someone in need. And so I'm happy you mentioned about giving back as a, a very good extracurricular activity, volunteering locally in the community here in Brooklyn. Uh, please, for the viewers out there, call a local hospital and just start volunteering and helping out. It'd be a huge help to the hospitals. What about research? We talk about being a scientist, not just being a physician. Physicians are care providers, but also scientists. Um, getting into the lab or, or research is important too. You would say some advice to some of our viewers. Yeah, about this? so you know there's there's a trend right now, you know, as as per medical students, but even even just as a pre med uh, in college, there there's this trend that you need research, you need research, you need research. And you know, I do have a bunch of friends who are in medical school who had no research. I myself didn't do too much research myself, but you know, I did try and you know make the make the um, uh, effort to really get myself involved in some of the research while I was still in Brooklyn College. So I got close with the chair of the biology department and did some research with him. And then moving on into medical school, I also was looking towards research. It's, I mean, besides for it being something that's helpful to put down on your resume, it also teaches you, you know, a little bit of humility, a little bit of some of the monotonous work that gets done behind the scenes, especially for, uh, for drug companies. Um, and, and just the, the small little details that are involved.